Alan Gustake here to do a comparison of the new Busby Double Fire that's sold in the Adventure Force line compared to their venerable Double Shot, which is, of course, the shell using double barrel shotgun. This is a new version, again, available for $10 exclusively through Walmart, as the Adventure Force product line is a Walmart exclusive. But it is taking up the mantle of the Double Shot and eliminating the shells in order to achieve higher performance and a higher rate of fire. Now, I have been in contact with Busby. The double shot is not going to cease being made. They are going to keep production going on it, so it will be available in some way, shape, or form in the Busby lineup for 2020. Now, this being my first video in 2020, just want to welcome you guys all into the new year. And, of course, as we keep going, it's going to be heavy and Busby content on the channel. And this is something I want to start out the year with. And this is something that's special to me because I've always loved the double shot. The double shot actually was my first Busby blaster. So I am partial to it. I own no fewer than like seven or eight of them at this point now and I absolutely adore them. I have both the uh, your traditional side by side as well as the over and under. And the double shot will be featured in a upcoming episode of Blaster Throwback which of course is inspired by Walcom's uh, Tagback series. But the double barrel shotgun style blaster is very simple, very fun, and has been around forever. I hear people talk about how it's unreliable because of the rope pull, and they hold that now against the uh, double fire. I can say with my experience, actually having this example since 2004, the rope pull is not the weak point. If there is a weak point in it, it would be in the hinge itself. And I'll, I'll go more on that when I do a video specifically on the double shot. But the fact that the new double fire uses the same priming mechanism shouldn't shouldn't hold you back from getting that. Because, well, it's just a simple uh, rope pull with, with pulleys. And if you were to have an issue, well, switch it to paracord. Which is going to be something that I show you in a future video modifying a double fire. Because, yeah, we're going to do a brass breech spring upgrade air restrictor removal, and a paracord upgrade. As well as, I'll probably do a number of paint jobs on these things. Very neat blaster. Just as the double shot always has been. But doing a direct comparison of the two, let's see exactly what we can look at as, not necessarily positive or negative, just simply differences. Well, for one, the double fire actually comes out as significantly smaller. If you line up the two, you can see that you lose about three inches or so. And most of that loss if you line up the barrels themselves, most of the loss is actually in the barrel. Because now, as you can see, from the back of both uh, brake actions, that is at least five inches. So the stock itself is significantly longer on the double fire from, well, from the, I, I shouldn't say the stock, the portion of the blaster from the breech backwards is, or brake action backwards, is significantly longer. Because if you put them side by side, lining up the brake action, the double fire has at least two inches or so of extra length from the brake back. Whereas the double shot has most of its length in the barrel. Now, of course, that brings us to the biggest difference. When you break open a double fire, you take two darts, which it comes with a green version of the long distance darts. You simply load the darts directly into the back of the breech. It's a direct breech style. No more shells. And that's either a, a plus or a minus depending on your viewpoint. It does help with the rate of fire and performance because this now with the same firing mechanism being able to do a two-stage trigger this actually will hit up almost to 80 feet per second or even over. With the included long distance darts it actually will exceed 80 feet per second on my chronograph multiple times. which is pretty good. Unlike I did in my review of it, it actually still maintains that 80 feet per second Busby average. Seems to be the ballpark they're going for. Now, the double shot on the other hand, in order to load it, break it. If you don't already have your shells pre-loaded, which you should, you should always, you gotta reach into your, I got a little bin of darts over here, load the darts into the shells. Now load the shells into the barrel and then you can fire and as you can hear 
there's significantly less velocity there. Well, I said that the double double fire can hit up to 80 feet per second, but double shot is lucky to hit 60. And part of that is, you know, older design, not as efficient. And part of it is the old design of these shells. Now, I will go into a separate video that I've been planning to do for a long time on what to do to improve the performance of Busby shell using blasters. And the best, impro the best improvement is, you could, you, we could say that you could do a, a easy upgrade of just simply twisting off or cutting off the dart posts. Because it's the, this is the carryover design from way back when, if you remember the yellow Busby darts with the purple suction cups. The old ones. This thing is a carryover of that generation. These have been unchanged since the introduction of the double shot. And of course all the other Busby shell using blasters that used to exist. These have a huge dart post tip and it flares out with almost like little hooks on it so it really drags on the dart. Big thing is immediately as you can see there just snip it off. This is a couple examples I did for the upcoming video where I just snip it off or you can grab it with uh, some pliers and twist it and eventually spin it a couple times and the plastic will shear off. That's a five foot per second average gain just by doing that. No cost, doesn't take any effort. You can do it, anybody can do it with any you know pair of pliers that they have on hand. Just snip or snip. And that'll push it at least up to the 60 mark. But along with performance, rate of fire is significantly lower unless you carry a whole satchel of preloaded shells around with you. You know, and then of course once you run out of preloaded shells, if you've got like say 30 or 40 like I do, you know, once you run out, you're out. And I still could use a lot more because I love the shell using blasters. I'm partial. And I'll admit that. But once you run out and you're forced to then go to the steps of load the shell, load the shell, load the blaster, then you're slowing down drastically. And that becomes a problem. Now, the double fire has none of that. Plus it has the ammo holder off to the side here, where you can just easily pull the darts out, slam them in there, slap that shut, and that's a much, much higher rate of fire because you eliminate an entire step. And they did design the breach very well to be able to just slap darts in there. And you know, if I reach over here real quick, you can just throw in darts like that, like that. You don't have to get them perfect. Push them down, shut it, and there you go. So rate of fire, power, ease of use. All things in the double fire's advantage. And Surprisingly, even though this is the new blaster, price is only 10 bucks. The last double shot version that I got my hands on was the most inexpensive for quite some time now. That was uh, when Dollar General had a special on the Walking Dead series. That's Rick's shotgun. They had it for 15. That's the lowest price I've seen in quite a while. Now, they used to go for around $13. You see them for $12.99 at stores. And you know, that's not a bad deal, but this is 10 bucks, you know, due to Walmart retail purchasing power. And with it being less expensive, easier to use, more powerful, and able to fire more darts faster, pretty easy to see. If performance is anything, a consideration for you, the double fire is definitely a across the board improvement over the old double shot. However, there are a lot of us out there who still love the old Busby double shot. Now the internals are extremely similar, so modifications are very, very similar. You know, like I said, I will do a video going over how to modify the double fire, and basically everything in that, other than brassing the breeches, which I will do, other than brass breeches, everything transfers over to the double shot. You know, it has the same pulley and, and rope system in there that, you know, activates as you break the barrel. That's always fun. I, I love, love the shell ejecting. And it pulls it and pulls the plunger tubes for both, both chambers. And that 
is the same exact thing that carries over to the double fire. So it's a tried and true system. Don't let people tell you that it's unreliable. Because I'm not going to claim to have the most double shots, but I certainly have plenty of them with lots of use over the years. And this is one thing I can, I can stand behind as being very reliable overall. Now, if you mistreat something, it's always going to have a higher chance of breaking. But I've literally been using my personal double fire that I bought back as a, as a teenager in, I, was like, I probably bought it when I was 13 or so. I bought that back myself and I'm still using it. It's still in my collection. And then I've added extras and I have zero problems with any of them other than the hinge will sometimes loosen up and then you have to reinforce the hinge where you actually break the barrel open. Only problem I've ever seen. That's, that's just me personally, out of the seven or eight that I have. And I don't see the double fire even having that because the hinge has been redesigned. So in the comparison of the double fire versus the double shot, there is not a winner unless you are looking for performance. If you look for performance, of course, go grab a double shot and have fun with it, modify it, and or, and, or just run it as it is because sometimes modifying is not necessarily the way to go. Sometimes you can just have fun tagging people out with a stock blaster. This is fun regardless. But if you're looking for the shells, if you're like me and you like this shell ejection, this is still hard to beat. Because right now, currently, Busby doesn't have anything else that fires the shells. And with there being other options of getting shells, it's not like that's a dead end. Because I will go over actually products I've been testing now for about five months. And that is a 3D printed shell for Busby blasters that use them, specifically for the double shot. But the double fire is a nice addition, and I think that in the comparison, most people are probably going to prefer this. So I, if I had to, I would call this the winner of a comparison between the two for being higher performance, easier to use, faster rate of fire, and cheaper. And of course, Walmarts are everywhere. You have to go fight with their uh, their stocking issues that they've had with this thing, but if you can see it on a shelf, for 10 bucks, it's hard to pass up. So comparing the two, I would have to say most people are probably going to pick the double fire, even if I have a bit of nostalgia for the double shot being my very first Busby blaster that I ever had. And and that does play a role. If you can't admit your bias, you're not a you're not an honest and trustworthy person to be put putting out content on YouTube because I'm gonna have some bias. Very first one, I still love them today. But for most people I'd say the double fire is the better choice. This is Mungus Jake with my comparison and my personal opinions and insight on the Busby Double Shot compared to the Adventure Force Double Fire, which is also a Busby product. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this.